Hey everybody, this is Roy Canning. My name's Violet. My name's Scotty. And today we're going to take a look at Marvel Battle Worlds here with my little ones. So the game setup is going to be slightly different based off the number of players. So you can see here with one player, you have one Thanos stone, you have one Thanos stone battle card, you have four other battle cards, and you need to win three battles to win the game. And if you ever lose three battles, you always lose the game. So let's see how this works. So basically at the beginning of the game, you're going to flip over one of these battle cards here and that will be your location for the game. I have a character here that has several different stats, Black Panther, and um, so he has different stats here. So you basically have the brains or like the mental thing here. He has zero, then force attack is one, and then strength is three, and then whatever this little whirlwind here is two. Um, then Black Panther may reroll attacks once at battles with a target of nine or more. So all of your characters have a little bit of a special ability here, and then stats. Well, these stats line up with these different icons that will be on different worlds. So basically what this means is you need to roll at least a seven on this 12-sided die plus your stat to be able to progress and start defeating this gamma corrupted insects. So at the beginning of each turn, um, I'll be able to move my characters to an active location and then I will make an attack on that location. So I can move my character here and then I will roll the die and I will be adding one to this roll. So I'm gonna to need to roll pretty high here. I'm gonna to need to get at least a six. So I get a four. So if I fail, I'm going to put one of these little um, threat tokens or danger tokens or whatever they're called up on here with the little Thanos face on it. Um, if I fail attacks, if this would have been nine or higher, I would have been able to re-roll with Black Panther's ability. And if I succeed, say I rolled a nine plus one would have been 10, I would have put my character on the little track here. Um, each time I succeed, I'm going to move across the track here. Each time I fail, it's going to move across the track here. If it ever, if I ever get to the end here, this flips over as a completed world or completed battle. Um, and if this ever gets to the last space on the track here, this flips over as a lost zone. If I ever win three, I win the game. If I ever lose three, I lose the game. And you have to win more based on the player count. So if we we're playing with two players, I'd have to win five before we lose three. So you're gonna have to work to try to make that happen. Also, after we roll, or after we've gone each time, we're going to flip this little token in between turns. So we're gonna flip the token. If I get the same symbol that matches the little place on the Battle World um, location card here, then this is going to advance. So as the game goes along, you could get more and more and that could advance further and further. So I flip, if I get a sun, I'm good. If I had gotten the moon, it would be bad and that would advance, which would be terrible. And then at the end of each turn, um, after I've used a character, I can flip it over to remind myself that that character has already gone, which is more important when you're playing a game with like five players and then they've unlocked multiple Thanos stones and there's characters all over the place. Cause you can kind of go in whatever turn order to see who has gone. Um, at the end of each turn, you're going to draw another card and you're gonna place it adjacent. Movement is kind of more abstract. You can just kind of move to whichever ones. And um, there are special ones here that um, are Thanos stone locations. If you go to them, once you complete the end, you'll crack open a Thanos stone. So these Thanos stones are like sealed, like spongy looking things. And um, you crack those open and you can get new characters out of these different Thanos stones. So um, to make the game even more replayable uh, for these Thanos stones, I have with my kids, I've gotten Easter eggs, orange Easter eggs, and I put characters inside of those. So um, if the characters ever get to the last space here, so if I was doing seven plus five or seven, so I have five here plus the two here, which would be seven for the whirlwinds. I'd be able to go on the track. And then of course the next turn, uh, a card would come out again and I would flip a coin to see if things advanced. And it's sunshine, so this doesn't advance, but this would. Um, then I'd roll again and try to crack open that Thanos stone. Cool, I made it. And then I'd be able to crack open the Thanos stone and get out a new character. The new characters that you crack open can immediately move to a new location. So the Thanos stone will have a number on the bottom of it and it'll also have a little thing that you can pull the character out. And then I would have Howard the Duck that I could add to my team. 
Um, and then, of course, he could immediately go to another location. If I had defeated this, this would be flipped over as a victory for me. I could immediately go to another one and then immediately roll on it and see if I could win. Um, Howard the Duck at brain locations does not advance the threat thing. So he's better at not screwing up the locations when he fails rolls. If you ever roll the star, that counts as immediate success. Some spaces even only have one space on the track, so we'd immediately be able to defeat it. And there's also a symbol, the Thanos symbol means you immediately fail no matter what you roll. Or no, I mean, obviously you rolled that, but no matter what ha else other abilities you have, you're gonna automatically fail. Um, and then you just keep going until you've either won the locations or you've lost them. So the next turn, you'd roll, draw one card for each character currently in play, and then you could move to the new cards. So this seems pretty much like a loss because it's three spaces. Maybe I want to send Howard over here because he's really good with the brains and Black Panther can go here because he's really good with this. Or I could team up and go up here because Black Panther is going to be able to re-roll as well. All I need is one more to win and then we win the game. So uh, I would roll the die for Howard the Duck and get a success. And simple as that, we've won the game. Cool, and it's basically just teamwork and just flipping the coins, extremely simple game, going back and forth, unlocking different characters. There are tons of these different battle world cards that you can get, and of course there's different Thanos stones with different types of um, abilities that you need to get on them. There are 60 cards in total, so there are all sorts of different things you can have, and some of them have 10 on it, which makes it really difficult, and then of course some go all the way down to 7. They normally kind of range in that range there. Um, and there's all sorts of different characters you can get in the game. Let's take a look at a few of the ones I got. I got Ultimate Thor, which is pretty cool here. He basically has, he can, uh, Ultimate Thor is nearby heroes, can re-roll. Nearby means in a, basically a space that's adjacent to this one. Can re-roll attacks at battles with the burst symbol, or like the four symbol, this one, that he's really good at. So people can re-roll that stuff. I also have Iron Man. So these are some of the basic Marvel characters you always see all the time. Um, but I really do like that there's more abstract stuff in there. My son was so excited to get this Captain America was his first character that he opened up. And he can add plus two to all attacks, which is really good if heroes are with him. When heroes are with him, they're much better, which is really cool. Um, and it's just interesting that they have like these animal characters mixed in with more classic characters that you see all the time in the movies, like Loki. But you also have Beta Ray Bill um, and then like Croctor Strange, which is just really strange and funny. Um, and then we have Dino Thor. What? And then, of course, you can get super rare um, characters. Like this is Black Panther, like we were looking at before. But this is Black Panther that has slightly better stats than the other Black Panther. Let's see here. So the Infinity Black Panther um, is just a little bit better. He's much better at the force attack and the special ability is basically the same. So he basically has plus two to that stat. Um, I mean, it's not that big of a deal as far as gameplay goes. It's just a silly little kids game. It's very light overall. I will say that the rules for the game are kind of like on this just sheet of paper. Um, and we, me and Mike, who basically do board games full time for a living, um, we're struggling with figuring out exactly how the rules work. And I'm like, I think it's just really simple. Like we just go to these locations and roll dice. Um, but it is definitely an interesting game as you're cracking open those Thanos stones, seeing what's inside, and it's just a fun game as a parent to play with your kids. I don't think this is something your game group's wanna, gonna wanna get out and play all the time, but it is fun to see these cool little Marvel toys. It's like basically a toy with a game as in a little cute addition to it as well. So let's take a closer look at what I think. There's also a checklist here that comes with the game, Ant Ant, I got Beta Ray Bill, and one of the ones that I'd really like to have is they have a bunch of the zombie characters here. I'd really love to have zombie Venom. Um, so you have your commons here, and then your rares are like these several little bad guys. Um, I wouldn't mind, I got the um, Infinity Throg, but I'd love to have the regular painted up version of him as well. And of course Baby Groot is cool, but those are all commons. And then you have the Infinity Stone characters, which like I said, have slightly better stats than their regular versions, but have the same special base as well. So I think it's really cute how they have all sorts of mixed up um, characters from uh, the Marvel Universe that are not normally characters you would see, like Spider-Ham and things like that, who was in Enter the Spider-Verse, but uh, really interesting stuff there that they've had it very like 
kid-like and cutesy. This is definitely a game for the little ones. So Marvel Battle World is an extremely light and simple game, but it's a game that's really easy to play with kids and kids could probably even play it by themselves. I got my son one of just the little eggs and um, let him open it up and let him play the game basically by himself. I taught him a little bit, but then he was off by playing it by himself and that was a lot of fun as well. The first time I played, I played with Mike Delicio from here on the channel and uh, we had a lot of fun. It was kind of interesting. The game is extremely light and cute and you're just rolling dice. It's very random what you get. But the excitement of saving those Thanos stones to open when you actually open them in the game, I think is what you have to do to make this game interesting even a little bit. Just because it's that whole, what are you going to get inside? And the interesting thing of like, oh, there's a Thanos stone location came out. Let's go there and crack that open and see which character we add to the team. And it's definitely interesting because there are codes written on the bottom of them that help you match up with the cards. And I think it's best to just like not pay attention to that at all. So you don't have any clue which character is inside the, the packaging before you open it up and you crack it open and you see what happens in the game. My kids were super excited when we were playing uh, the game. Each time we would draw one of the Thanos stone locations, they immediately wanted to move their characters there so that way they could try to crack it open and they'd work as a team. And we basically just took turns like seeing who would control the character that got cracked out of the Thanos stone and who would get to open it up. Um, for me, uh, also, it, since the whole cracking open on the Thanos Stone is kind of like a one-time thing, the rulebook says you can randomly select characters or select a character from your pool of things to add into the game, but I found it more interesting for it to be a little bit more random and keep that sense of excitement. I got like orange Easter eggs and put the characters inside that, even for the characters that um, came out of the starter set because you get three characters that I think they're normally commons, but I got three characters out of the starter set that weren't in eggs. And then of course you have the Spider-Man that comes with the starter set itself. Um, but I sealed those up as well. So that way it was still kind of random and the kids were seeing them for the first time when they cracked it open. And um, you can continue to do that and seal them right back up. Everybody's picked their starting characters. You seal all the characters up, randomize it, and then you feel like you're cracking characters out of Thanos stones again. Um, but yeah, the game, there's not a whole lot there. Um, this is more of a toy with a game also. Um, but I still thought it was fun and cute the way it works. It's basically just stats and trying to put the character in the right place and roll the dice. Um, but it, it seems to work okay. I mean, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from this because I knew I've opened a lot of those LOL dolls and like surprise toys and like Minecraft things where you get randomized boxes. And this is pretty much that, but there's a light little cooperative game involved as well. Um, the excitement from this, it definitely comes from opening up and seeing what you get with the cute little toys. And it's cool that they come with little display stands. I guess they know that people are going to try to collect these. Um, I don't think the rarity that matters that much. I mean, you do have the super rares that have the infinity stones and they're clear and stuff like that. And they have slightly better stats. But as far as gameplay goes, it really doesn't make that much of a difference because they have like a boost to like one of their stats or like a couple of their stats and they can roll better on the die. Um, but this isn't a game that you're going to be super strategic with anyway. It's more like you just roll the die and see what happens. Um, of course, there's the choice of going to the place that you that character is best at defeating, but those choices are pretty obvious. But for kids, it's fun and interesting trying to crack open Thanos stones and work together as a team to not be defeated by Thanos. Um, I got a couple of the eggs and then I got the starter set. The starter set is pretty cool because it comes with um, a bunch of characters in it. You get six characters in total, but you just get two Thanos stones. Um, I do like the, the fact that the balls that you can get basically is like a self-contained game. You can play solo with just one of those, which I thought was really cool as well. Like as a parent, I mean, it might actually be cool to just get one of those and help your kid play through the game solo. And that way they can play with it and play with the toys afterwards. This is really just a vehicle for kids collecting cute little toys overall. Um, Mike says it feels like popping the uh, gumballs out of like a gumball machine where you get the little random toys and you're trying to collect the different ones. Um, but yeah, let's get the kids back here and see what they think about the game. Awesome. So Violet, what was your favorite part about the game? Having fun! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> Did you enjoy the fact that this was a cooperative game where you're working together to crack open stuff? Uh-huh. And my favorite character is Gamora! What about you, Scotty? What did you like about the game? I like, I like cracking open the Thanos egg. 
the Thanos stones. Yeah, that it's really fun to be able to get out the new characters. And that was one of their favorite parts is seeing Scotty when when we'd flip over a new card that had the Thanos stones on it. Scotty would always be super excited and jumping up and down to be like, what new character are we going to get? <laughs> yeah. And what was your favorite character? It was Black Panther. Awesome. Yeah. So we all got a whole bunch of different characters here, and it was a whole lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy this game. It's fun for little ones, but it's definitely got that whole toy factor. All right. Tell everybody. <laughs> well, I got to open a real one, and my dad and my dad likes it. Yep. That one. The the uh, the Thor frog. I was really excited. I was even just hoping to get the common one, and uh, Violet cracked open one of these out of one of the Thanos stones. And I'm like. That's the character I'm using from now on because he's a lot of fun. And I was the first one to open that. I was the first one to open the egg and I got that frog. That frog's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool because we got a ri very diverse like group of things. And one of the things I really enjoy about the game as well is that all the characters are very different and they're not like normal normal characters you see in Marvel, like Howard the Duck is awesome, and we got Captain Americat and all the stuff, and it mixes these weird animals with the normal characters like Iron Man and uh, Croctor Strange. And there's actually like a kid series that you guys watched as well that was based on this. Yeah. And and anyway, um, this is Marvel Battle World, definitely a fun game to play with your little ones and lots of fun. All right, tell everybody bye. Bye. bye.